Oh la 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 la. So, these are bravura. Uh, people are saying I'm never going to say it right. It's not bravura. It's bravura. That's how you say it. From Sonoma. Um, when we were at SoCal Can Jam, there was a booth, a soundproof booth, which you could sit in. And inside of that were two um, Sonoma units. And the, the, the electrostat and the electrostatic energizer was $30,000. Luckily for you, these are six. Zeo's six gemstones in the title, please. Okay, let's get this started. So, I haven't done electrostats in a bit. I know Wu Audio. I was at um, Canjam New York, and Wu Audio was there, and they have an electrostatic fireflies. It's a little, oh, I got it down there. I'm going to pull that shit out. It's so cool. Um, and that's interesting, because I'm going to get to use my stacks again, because I really pull my stacks out, because I feel like... Whenever I pull my stacks out, it takes all these headphones in the wall and completely trashes them for just this wild stuff it does being an electrostatic. So then why am I here with the Sonoma Bravura? And not feeling that same amount of like, oh God, this is the pinnacle. Like I've got Utopias back there. I just did the Rawls. Like, I mean, I just did the Thyodio Ghost. And all those headphones are like, my God, my God, my God. So whooping out the $6,000 combo should literally have me in spasm on the floor. I should be bochying the rock all over the floor. And yet I'm listening to these and I'm just like, all right, yeah, it's super clear. Super clear. A little bit uncomfortable. Oh, nope. It's got a decent bass response. And they get relatively loud. Okay, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm just like agreeing with these. I feel like... Because, you I mean, you could buy them individually. You could buy just the ear speaker. You could buy just the amp. They're from Mimic Audio, who are cool people. Handed, they, they handed these, these to me. They're like, here. Um, apparently, and I don't think there's an actual sound change, but this set, 5995 you get it in black, 6795 Why? Why is why is there a eight hundred dollar difference to get it in black? Black is a more boring color. I like silver. Don't know. You can buy just the amp for forty four hundred. So here's the thing: the problem is that this amplifier is forty four hundred dollars, and I feel like that's the ratio is off now. Because now that you know how much the amplifier costs. Yeah, it's four thousand. I'm sorry, the silver one. Forget the black. The black being more expensive is dumb. This amplifier is four fucking grand. The issue else being, I'm going to shut it off, is it's proprietary for this because it has this giant. You know the connector that's on. Um, I don't know what headphones had something like this. Well, these have something like this, but it's like a locking. Like you pull this down, and there's actual latches that are tracked in. So it's got like a fucking eight pin got like a nine pin plug and this thick ass cable and this unit itself is the bulk of that six thousand dollars because the silver headphone is 1995 and at 1995 i could be like okay if i could buy these and plug them into a regular Stax energizer that'd be great because two thousand dollars believe it or not on this channel represents an actually kind of affordable item but you can't because this so these are being, basically, you're being cocked into you have to get the the Energizer that works specifically with this because of the system they're using. They're using a whole new type of, I got to read the name. Excuse me one second because I wasn't going to memorize this shit. It's an HPEL transducer, the world's first headphone system to use the high precision electrostatic laminate or HPEL, audio transducer developed by Warwick uh, Day 25, audiophile uh, invested, uh, benefits, distortion, wider, handmade, matched transducer, blah, 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 blah. So, what that essentially means is you can't, you can, the only reason they sell them individually, this and that, is so you can mix and match the colors. But I, I don't think, and you please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because I do exactly zero seconds of research before I do a review, because I'm j I am want to represent the angry audiophile consumer, which was too long a name for YouTube. But I want to represent that in the fact that 
you just blew six thousand dollars and you're like well why so to plug this back in and you have to um you have to turn off the power switch or it will bring up a red light which means you you've done bad you don't want to do bad with this it's too expensive there's a huge power switch guess where it the fuck is in the back immediately first problem um you don't plug 110 into this box another weird thing is this is your power supply it's literally a rubberized like the rubber that turns into goo after a bit it's a rubberized what's your what's your actual output power hold on golden profit electronics i'm shitting you not that's the name of this golden profit electronics ll limited 24 volt, 2700 milliamp, or 64 watts. So let's put that back down on top of all the other equipment that's resting behind the desk. You plug that in, you got a power switch back there. On this side, you get, oh, what are you? You are the analog input. You could either have RCA inputs or a 3.5 millimeter, because that's important. And on the digital input side, because this does digital and analog inputs, coaxial digital or USB, and here's your screw in power plug so power switch and then you pick 3.5 or rca i've got rcas going in we'll discuss that because the foz is on it and i've got coaxial digital beautiful fucking box by the way nice and heavy i love these vents like if you're gonna sell me a expensive box at least make it look nice like look they're, they're carved in there the front is a i'm assuming that's a solid fucking piece if it's not a it's a solid piece Big, thick knob. I love a thick knob. Um, we'll talk about the headphone build now for a second, just so I can put the timestamp down. Zio, stop getting the timestamps, you dumbass. You've been doing this for like years. These are exceedingly light. Considering how big they are, that is a big fucking cup with a big, solid four knuckle. They're very, very light. Ledger sets usually are, but they've taken the time. The There is a front and back adjustment here that's nice and stiff, so it just it sort of falls into place. It does this bow tie rock. What does it say there? Made in Britain. I remember the guys who were in the booth were super British. Um, I do have some comfort issues with these because, I mean, they're fine. Like, I think that's plastic. Yeah, these are plastic. And this is plastic. Like, I, I'm looking at it, it's like, shouldn't this be metal? Shouldn't, I mean, I know they're only $2,000 for, for the actual ear speaker, but like that's, that's metal and you're charging me this for this? I don't know, actually I don't know the brand well enough to know if they sell just this and then alternatives to this, like I'm trying to get into that game. But I'm reviewing this as a $6,000, you have to fucking buy it. You have to buy this to get this to work. The The back has this like wavy metal mesh I really like. You can see the driver is sort of different from all the uh, other electrostats I've done. I don't really, mm, I took it off anyway. The pad is one of those pads like the Sennheiser HC 600s where it's got a plastic ring with like a lip. And there's, there's a driver. What I'm getting at with these headphones or these ear speakers, I gotta stick with consistent terms here on this channel because we're all about consistency here on Zero Views. Is they're kind of boring. They're kind of flat. No relation. Um the wire is absolutely heavy. Like this, this is not this is a rubberized thing here. This is a, a big, big chonky rubberized thing. The wire actually makes the headphones feel heavier. Because when you pick it up, it's like, ugh. Uh, it's like like drags them down and then the biggest problem i have with this headphone as far as comfort goes is not the pads the pads are a little bit like stiff they're huge and they're a bit hard but i, I can live with that if the clamp is correct and let me tell you i have spent more than a few minutes trying to unclampify this six thousand dollar setup by like doing this and, like just like come on Give me some relaxation. Because look at the size of this headband. It's massive. It, it, it's as wide as the headphone, the entire top of it. It's got the Warwick logo. And it's plastic again. And these are the spring steel here. But you can't, like, they have to be able to go up. So I can't just fuck with the spring steel. These are going back to Mimic. And I, they just clamp. Like, here's the thing. That's... 
do I have another any other headphone here is another headphone look here's it see how the headphone see how it opens and you put it on your head and you take it and you close it rd7 r70x these and I actually have this extended past where I like it you basically have to slam your head into it you have to like putting on a fucking race helmet it's like uh, uh, okay I'm in there I would like there to be 15 to 25 percent less clamp maybe 50 percent less clamp then we got to talk about the weirdness because I'm wearing them right now I'm talking to you and there's nothing playing they're just on my head and I've never experienced this because they're an open back obviously you saw it and I I could hear the cats talk walking over there and everything but it's not it sounds like my voice is being reverse phased and played through the headphones I have no idea what's causing that. It's the weirdest sensation of like, woom, 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 woom. It's like if you stuck your head in a filing cabinet and you spoke, but there wasn't echo. It's like speaking into a deadened file cabinet. It's the strangest sensation. And I literally don't know how to define what that's doing, but it's gotta be part of the sound reproduction. So let's get on to sound. I have it on the digital input because we're gonna fuck with it with the Black Ice Audio Foz SXX. Because if you're gonna spend six grand, you might as well sell spend 6,550. In fact, in the review of this, I use these and I just carried it over for the next like that's it. Just I'm gonna use it with that. Because here we go. What is this? Rod oh hold on, scroll it a little bit. This is Romeo Lombardo and Rafael Rabello Malencia from various guitar collection, Chesky Jazz sort of stuff. Very clean, very clear. It feels audiophile because I'm listening to an audiophile track. If I change tracks and we go to like the Rival Schools theme from a Dreamcast, it's still very good. I, I'm not gonna knock these headphones. Their capabilities are at least as good as other electrostatics, but I find myself drooling when I put on my stacks. And with these, it's sort of like, I've heard this. I've heard things this good with this much bass, with this much clarity. Uh, it's called a good planar headphone. I think we've reached a point of good planar headphones where you're, you're there. We're there now. Electrostats used to be this like magical thing, and maybe they still are at like the nine thousand dollar range, or that new stacks, which is the X nine thousand, which is why nine thousand popped in my head. But like Paul Simon's Graceland is playing, and if I whipped out a seven eight hundred, if I took out the the Moondrop Venus and plopped it on this Arkle three Pro, that would be a total unit cost of like eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars. And that's expensive, but it's a slightly less than $6,000, and I'm pretty sure I get the same results. The, these don't do anything to the sound that makes it like, oh my God, you've got to hear Bravura. It doesn't. I don't hear it. I mean, I'm using the DAC built in. If you're telling me the DAC built into this $4,000 amp is shit, and I should be sourcing it with an RCA outputting other DAC to make it better. What I can do, flip it to analog, source it instead of just through an expensive DAC, Gushelli Labs DAC down there, Black Ice Audio Foz SSX, put the soundstage knob up, take the bass and just put it roughly where I think the bass belongs. So apparently on this thing, like zero isn't zero, zero is like somewhere in there. Now it's good. But then again, this also will work on every amp. It, it's, these are, this setup here with these and this is just like, close your eyes and hole punch what audiophiles probably want. And here you go. It's, it's flat and neutral and it's clean. It's super clean. It's super clean. It's super clean. Do I love it? No. Do, must I have it? No. Is it super clean? Yeah, there you go. That's all I've got to say about them. It doesn't add anything to the sound, which is 
That could be a literal fucking bullet point for most things that audiophiles buy. It adds nothing. Give us $6,000. If I'm paying that sort of money, I hate to tell, hate to break this to everyone out there who's truly an audiophile, but if I'm paying that sort of money, um, you better add something to the fucking sound. You better add warmth or depth or soundstage. Like, this is a $5,500 unit. Guess what it does? It adds fucking soundstage. Great. I My money is going towards a thing. But this is just like the most cutthroat, straightforward. Like, it's good. It's good. It could even be great, but I got the same shit out of planar as I guess what? Don't need this, which by the way, gets very warm. So you can't just leave it on all the time. So you're gonna have to give it the old reach around to turn it off at night. And then I could actually use any, I could use $4,000. You spent $2,000 on fucking headphones and $4,000 on source gear. You could get this and this and the TA-22 and a decent DAC or an R2R DAC. Da you could buy so much for $6,000. You could even buy a set a little more, spend $2,000 on the source gear, $4,000 on the fucking, on the headphones, and you could have $4,000 headphones, or two $2,000 headphones, or a $2,000 headphone, and four $500 headphones. We're back to that sort of thing, where Zeos is like, I'm a cheap motherfucker. I have to look at this and be like, if this was doing something that only this could do, and there was no other options, but you have to get this. Like what I feel with the Stax L700s. You ha you can't do anything the Stax can do without the Stax. The end. But these, I feel like I could get a planar and fucking, I could do it. I could do it. In fact, I'll link to the Moondrop Venus on Mimic Audio who sent me this. Because if you're going to look at something, look at that. It's also silver. Only don't charge more for a black version because there is no black version because black versions are stupid black equipment is just boring 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 ooh boring purple fucking gashelli labs wood and purple so yeah i think i'm i only enjoy like actually physically sitting here and listening to music when i'm pumping through the black eyes Foz ssx and frankly i think i'm more impressed by that than what the reproduction here is on this it's good it does nothing it's not supposed to do. Another bullet point audio files will fucking check off on. Oh my God, it does nothing it's not supposed to do. It's amazing. And then it's this weird sound thing when I put it on my head. I love how that sounds like farts. Orbital's got some weird music, hold on. Tune that into my to where I like it. Switch back to digital. Boring. Fucking boring. Yeah, once once you've messed around with something like this that's actually actually making a sound difference in your music, having this just be pure is just uh... So thank you to Mimic for sending this out. I'm glad I got to finally review it. I like how it sits up like that. That's kind of cool. Um, wallpaper in the hoard. Link to this. Link to some alternatives if you want to spend your money. In fact, you know what, Zeos? Just to bother myself in the future. Could you do like a $6,000 alternative list just for Mimic Audio? Go to those links. See what I've put together. I, I, I guarantee you, you could be happier spending $6,000 on that list than just this. That's just how it's going to be. Um, so yeah, wallpaper hoard that. Patreon subscribe star support this channel, please. Thank you all my patrons and subscribe star subscribers. You guys are literally my lifeblood. And I can't, if it wasn't for companies like Mimic sending me shit to review and then taking it back, and people like you paying for my, literally my bills, the bills, um, you know, I wouldn't be here. So uh, check out my Patreon for $5 a month. See reviews early. Participate in yard sales, which happen from the 1st to the 10th of every month. And I do ship internationally, but it costs you half shipping. And then sound demos, which I haven't sound demos the Bavaras yet. So I got to go do that. That'll be interesting. And I got to use any tracks I want and use any wallpapers I want because those are private just for patrons. Uh, $10 a month gets you in the behind the scenes Telegram chat where you can buy, sell, trade gear. You know my opinions instantly. And you also get access to a lifetime swap me channel to buy, sell, and trade gear. So, yeah, no, I'm I'm done. Are you done? Is she done? Are we done? I'm sorry to hurt the teddy bear, but I, I just I just don't do... Even the $30,000 ones were very clear, but they weren't HE1s. 
and they weren't worth thirty thousand dollars and that's it i'd rather spend my money on a lot of little things than one big honk and this is the problem here if they sold this for two thousand and a five hundred dollar energizer this would be a different fucking story but if you gotta throw four grand in it hell no man hell no